We have the very unusual situation that one of the teams in contention to grab that top pick is not a struggling franchise desperate for an overhaul, but a Golden State Warriors squad with a loaded roster and three recent titles. The Golden State Warriors have won three of the last four NBA titles. I've been drinking the champagne sour in the locker room for a long time. I got three of these bad boys that right. makes it all work. Grabbing that right leg. It's so unfortunate for Kevin Durant. That's his left knee, writhing in pain. There's a new NBA champion. KD and Kyrie, the newest dynamic duo in the NBA. Curry with a lot of contact. Uh-oh. This is the one thing they could not afford. To go from best to the worst record in the NBA. Quite a tumultuous ride there for the Warriors' Woj. What is the thought process in the Bay Area with how to use this draft pick, especially if it goes number one? Uh, Rachel, Golden State's GM Bob Myers tells me that wherever the Warriors land in this lottery, they're going to be aggressive uh, in canvassing the league uh, and using that pick as an asset uh, in trade talks. Their mandate in Golden State is not to find you know, a transformational young player necessarily, but, but, but a player or players that are on the, tr- the age trajectory of Steph Curry and Klay Thompson and their veteran players, they're trying to win more championships in the short term, and a high pick for them is going to be a, a pretty attractive allure to get out into that trade market. Thanks so much, Woj. Who better to ask about the age trajectory of Steph Curry than Steph Curry? Welcome, Steph. I can only imagine how it feels for someone as competitive as you having to watch other teams competing for a title in the bubble. How can tonight be the first step in you getting back into the thick of things the way Woj was just describing, setting the table for next year? Yeah, it's weird. Like you showed that that clip, what we the journey mm-hmm. we've been on these last five, six years. So we we won every experience in the league. So now we're in the lottery, <laughs> trying to get a high draft pick, see what happens. But uh, it gives us obviously a perspective of what kind of team we're gonna have next year with the guys coming back off injury. Clay, uh, you know what Draymond's been through this last year. Myself coming off the hand. So I mean, we're obviously confident. We know what we're capable of, and, and see how this all shakes out. Yeah, well, it'd be nice to add a number one pick to that. I understand that you have a good luck charm on your side tonight. Can you share who that is? Not here, but Joe Lacob <laughs> uh, and, and Nicole, their dog, uh, Larry, who's appropriately <laughs> named after the trophy. So uh, a rescue dog from Miami that they adopted uh, a couple years back. So hopefully uh, we get a pick and uh, they'll get to know the dog really well. Absolutely. Steph, thanks so much for joining us. Good luck to your team tonight. Now at the other end of the spectrum from a team like the Warriors are the Knicks, trying once again to get off the launching pad after a series of false starts. Jay Williams is in New York. Jay, what's top of mind for the Knicks and the new brain trust that recently took over the front office? Yeah, Rachel, over the last couple of days, I've gotten a chance to talk to multiple people around the New York Knicks organization. And there seems to be uh, the fact that there is no consensus number one pick, no bona fide player that they would take with the number one pick if the Knicks were able to land a number one pick. Now, I know a lot of New York Knicks fans from being around the streets here in this city are dying to get LaMelo LaMelo Ball. But the question is, does LaMelo Ball's game fit into the style and the scheme of how Tom Thibodeau would like to play? Some people will question that. Is that Anthony Edwards? But then you also have R.J. Barrett. Can they be a two or three scenario? Or Obi Toppin. So I think a lot is on the line tonight for the Knicks. Could they actually get the top pick and use that as a trade asset? But there's no doubt about it. There's a lot of energy in the city around what the Knicks will do with this pick. And we will wait to see what Leon Rose chooses to do. Thank you, Jay. Of course, the lottery, not the only thing going on tonight. We're in the middle of a four-game slate in the NBA bubble, and I'm thrilled to bring in the man overseeing everything going down in Orlando, NBA Commissioner Adam Silver. Welcome, Adam. Thanks, Rachel. Great to be with you. So much planning, I know, went into the bubble. The health and safety protocols, the competitive structure, creating the play-in game. Still, you can't predict everything going in. What has surprised you about the way things have gone so far? 
I think what surprised me the most is the level of competition. I think being in one place, practicing, you know, a sense, competing, sleeping, you know, all being together, I think it's just made a big difference on just how lively their legs are. Probably, you know, the break too also helped recovery in certain ways. So I, I think overall, I've just really been pleased with the level of competition. And then we also, Adam, have the question of next season. The league had initially floated December 1st as the start of next season, which means opening training camps in early November. As we sit here now, how likely do you think that timetable actually is? And what's your current thinking on whether you can do home markets versus another bubble or pod scenario? December 1, now that we're working through this season, is feeling um, a little bit early to me. I think our number one goal is to get fans back in our arenas. My sense is, and working with the Players Association, if we could push back even a little longer and it increase the likelihood of having fans in arenas, that's what we, we, we would be targeting. Well, Adam, thank you so much for joining us. What's been going on in the bubble has been remarkable on so many truly meaningful fronts. We appreciate your time. All right, stay tuned. Right after this break, we'll be joined by two of the top prospects in this year's NBA draft, Anthony Edwards and LaMelo Ball. And in the caucus, we have Jerome Pickett, NBA Executive Vice President and Chief Security Officer, along with Darrington Hobson of Erston Young. He is placing the envelopes at the podium. You know what that means. We will reveal the 2020 NBA draft lottery order when we come back. NBA Draft Lottery is presented by State Farm. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Yo, Dad, come play some ball. You're not my dad. I'm not your dad. Of course I'm your dad's son. I wasn't your dad.